All right, everybody. It is January 5th, 2024. We had an incredible slate of basketball games last night. Doubleheader on TNT. Both games, absolute bangers. Absol down to the last shot, both of them. One a missed three, one an insane made three. We're going to talk about those. It is 9.09 a.m. Central Standard Time. It is a crisp Friday morning in the DFW. Metroplex, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can catch, check these out live on playback.tv slash Biased. If you're watching this on playback.tv slash Biased, you can check the VODs out on the Slightly Biased Clips channel over on YouTube. But I figured today, I mean, how can you not talk about the incredible games last night? The Bucks and the Spurs, down to the wire, an absolute banger. Did the Bucks make like free throws at the very end of this game or something? Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, Pat Connington. Okay, I was about to say because this was a three-point game, right? Ron Dragic recently announced the star-studded lineup for his farewell event. Holy shit, that is a star-studded lineup. Wait, what is a? Uh, when is that going to happen? So, anyways, sorry, got derailed already. Bucks and Spurs. This was an incredible game. This is what I was hoping we would get from the Spurs this season. Uh, not that they would be consistently keeping up with some of the best teams in the league record-wise, which is what the Bucks are, but that their games would be fun to watch, that, that you would need to tune in. You have to tune in to see what Wimby's about to do. You have to tune in to see the end of this game. This was what I was hoping we would get more of, okay? Uh, just a, an epic duel between Giannis and Wimby, back and forth, two of the, two of the biggest unicorns in the sport. People kept calling, so Wimpy's a true unicorn, just for so many different reasons. They kept calling Giannis a unicorn. Do you guys consider Giannis a unicorn? Because I don't know. I don't know if I would consider Giannis a true unicorn. I think that term gets tossed around way too lightly. I think that term gets tossed around a little too lightly. Uh, an unbelievable physical specimen who has reached a point in his career i think uh i mean he's been at this point obviously he's a multiple time mvp a finals mvp but he's just so in such control of the game like you just know you feel like you always know what you're getting out of wimby or, i'm sorry Giannis. Four, 44 points 14 rebounds seven assists he's been on an absolute tear lately two for three from deep both of those threes in what the final minute and a half of the game i mean dagger threes gut punch gut-wrenching threes that if those go in against you, you, you can't help but just laugh. Yeah, true. They do have, like, their, their athleticism and their body types. Sure. For sure. Like, but what I want to say unicorn, like, Wimby's a unicorn in every sense of the word. But, like, to me, Jokic is a unicorn. I don't think we'll ever see a player like Nikola Jokic again. Like, I, I just, I don't think you'll see it. I don't think you'll see it. I don't even really like calling KP that much of a unicorn. Like, a tall guy who can shoot and block shots. Like, I, I guarantee you those guys become a, a little bit more common over the course of the next, you know, a, couple, a few decades. To me, like, KD is also close to what you would consider a unicorn. Just being a seven-footer who can dribble and do the things he can do offensively. But this, this was just such a fun game. Wimby just had some jaw-dropping moments, man. I tweeted this out. I genuinely don't think... It's crazy to say because he was such a hyped prospect. One of the most hyped draft prospects of all time. Um, the, the clip of him taking one step from, what was it, the half-court line or the other free-throw line, one dribble uh, to dunk... The NBA tweeted out that, that that was about to become the most viewed highlight ever. For the NBA Twitter account. And, and he's now doing a bunch of crazy shit. Like, every game, it's, he's starting to rack them up. This is exactly what we kind of thought. I mean, this shit was, this was insane. I tweeted out, like, I don't think people realize, truthfully, just how big this guy's star is going to be. How bright this guy's star is going to shine. Um, 
it, again, that's crazy to say. He's one of the most hyped draft prospects we've ever seen. But I think just this really bad start to the season, this really bad start to the season for Wimby, not just Wimby, sorry, but for the Spurs, uh, has really sort of killed a bit of the hype. But when you can do stuff like this, I'll talk about Dame here in a bit. I, I, I'm telling you guys, I don't, I don't see it with this Bucks team. I, they're good. Their record wise is great. I, I do not take them seriously at all. I, I just, I can't take them seriously. Uh, the, the, they can win a couple series, sure. I don't think that they can compete in any real, legitimate, serious way against like the Celtics. I mean, this. Oh my God. And then you had this block. Look at, okay. 29 seconds left in the game. Three-point game. Giannis scores here. The game's over. Okay. This is just an insane. I I actually agree, B-Dot. I'm happy you said that because I was about to say it. I thought this was his best play of the night. I thought this was his best play of the night, too. This block is absurd. Oh man, they don't have a re- they don't have like another alternate angle of it, but just this right here. I mean, good job getting low by Wimby, but Giannis puts his body on a guy like this. It's over. Giannis gets a bit of a head of steam. Wimby's dropping. This is this is curtains usually. Wim, uh, uh, Giannis is gonna put his body on you. People want this to, stuff like this to be an offensive foul. That's not an offensive. And Wimby just absorbs that, and he's so long and lengthy that it doesn't matter. I mean, that is absurd. That's an insane block. But you, you got to give it to Giannis, too, because Giannis dunked on him a couple times. I mean, this was just a great matchup, a great, a great back and forth. Just a great back and forth. Wimby hit, I mean, this trail three right here to tie the game with a minute left. I was on my couch going, oh, oh. And here's Giannis hitting a fucking three. Oh, wait, no, sorry. There's Giannis getting an A1 dunk. <laughs> He's disgusting. Oh, my God. Giannis is so crazy, man. Giannis is so crazy. It's just insane watching him. It, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's going to be so good for the sport. It really is. It sucks because, especially as a Mavericks fan, this guy's in the same division of, as the Mavericks. Um, he's going to be really good for a long time. And, and the Spurs are going to be good whenever they figure some shit out. And I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, Devin Vassell had a great game in this one. I don't, I don't know if they have really anything else on their roster, to be honest with you, uh, that like you can count on to be there for an extended period of time. Vassell, obviously, you have to keep. He's had an up-and-down season. Hasn't had like the great season I was kind of hoping he would have, but um, he was really, really good last night. And you saw, like you saw from Vassell some of the stuff, right? You saw some of the stuff. Um, From, from Vassell that gets you going and gets you excited. The crazy shot making. Those pull-up jumpers, man. That little midi. You, you see him pull up in the mid-range, you're like, wait, is that Devin Booker? Do the Spurs have a treasure trove of picks? Um, they got a decent amount. I don't think they have, they don't have like a thunder treasure trove, but they've got some. I'm more worried for Wimby blocking Lucas step back three range is insane. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, he's, he's probably going to finish top four in defensive player of the year voting this year. If I had to guess, let me look at, let me look up the odds. But it, it, he, he's going to – him and Chet might just be dueling it out for defensive players of the years for the next seven, eight years after this. I mean, I, I don't know. 
Okay, never mind. I thought Wimby would have better odds than this, but I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, Wimby's making like a top five for defensive player of the year push. Chet, for sure, will be finishing top two, top three in defensive player of the year. It still looks like Gobert is going to win it pretty comfortably. But man, uh, what, what, what a fun game. And again, that's what I was hoping most games for the Spurs would be. Not that they would, I, I, I think I predicted them to, I don't know if it was last, but either, either last or second to last. I knew that they would be bad. Some people talked themselves into like, a, well, holy shit, could they make the play-in tournament? Uh, I knew that they'd be bad, but I didn't expect them to be as absolutely terrible. As, as they uh, have been. Which has sucked, because it hasn't been nearly as enjoyable watching Wimby as, as you'd hope. But well, last night was just incredible. And again, Devin Vassell hitting tough shots. I mean, that's, that's what I was hoping to see. Devin Vassell have this real legit breakout season, most improved type season. I think I picked him to win most improved player. I'm pretty sure I picked him to win most improved player two years in a row. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Sohan's shooting a fucking game-tying three. Uh, Trey Jones missed a game-tying three in the corner. Granted, that was a good look. That was a good look and a good pass by Wimby right there because Wimby definitely, at, at the end of the game, the Spurs were down three. They needed a three to tie. Wimby could have definitely pulled up on the wing. I mean, he was guarded by Damian Lillard, who's just, uh, I'll talk about him in a second, but one of the absolute fucking worst defenders you'll ever see. Trey Jones is 21% uh, from three this season. And uh, hold on a second. He has missed his... Holy shit. This can't be right. He hasn't hit a three since December 23rd. And over that stretch has missed his last 13 threes. So, yikes. But it, it was wide open in the corner. Versus the Mavericks? Yes, he did. He, uh, well, to be fair, he went one of four from three against the Mavericks. It's not like he torched them. So Trey Jones is like a really poor three-point shooter. But still, I mean, he was a wide-open corner three. You know, it's hard. It's, that's, that's a shot that you're okay with. Damian Lillard is like the reverse Gobert. You put him on a team, and they instantly become a bottom 10 defense. <laughs> uh, like, Jetty Osmond played well in this game. I, I kind of like Jetty Osmond. I, I think he's a pretty solid role guy. I'm kind of interested to see. If, if he gets traded to a team, like, he might, he might help them out, a contending team. Uh, but, man, just, just – wimby has been really good defensively this season. I, ho I hope this is the start of the Spurs, like, starting to play some real competitive games. I doubt it, but I hope so. For the Bucks, I mean, Giannis went crazy. Uh, Dame – 25 and 10, he was really terrible at the start of this game. Did turn it on in the fourth quarter to his credit. You know, here's the thing about the clutch player of the year thing. I think Dame is, yeah, Dame is the favorite currently to win this fucking award. The reason why the Bucks are in so many close games and Dame can, can you know, go off in the fourth quarter is because, one, he's typically not very good through the first three quarters. And, two, his defense is so fucking horrid that they're just naturally going to be close in every single game that they play. It's funny because the TNT broadcast, the TNT podcast, uh, the TNT like uh, uh, inside the inside the NBA afterwards, Shaq and Kenny are like, "Oh, it's a great win for the Bucks. You know they didn't look great, but second out of a back to back, you pull out a win. Like that's a great job. That's what championship teams do." And <laughs> Chuck was like, "This is not how a championship team looks. Like this is not a great win. This is not how a championship team looks." And I agreed a hundred percent with him. I was listening to Shaq and Kenny say that. I was like, "What?" Like, I, this was a, I thought this was a bad win for the Bucks. Their defense is fucking horrid. Da like, just if you're next time you're watching a Bucks game, just watch Damian Lillard. He, he has to be the worst defender in the sport. I've watched a lot of NBA this season for like legit big minute players. I, I think he absolutely has to be probably the worst of the bunch defensively. It is terrible. It is terrible how bad he is defensively. And to make matters worse, like it's one thing if you're just a bad defender, which Dame is just naturally. 
Uh, but it's another problem if he's horrible in transition. Horrible. Yeah, it, it does kind of look like he's phoning it in. It looks like he's in his own head or something. Like, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, there's a lot, it's a lot of pressure, right? If you're a guy like Dame and you've been on one team your whole career and that's like how you, that's how you, you built your career, your entire brand basically was, hey, I'm loyal. And then you're like, actually, I want to get traded. And now you're on a team that should be like a top tier uh, finals favorite. I'm sure that's a little intimidating there's a lot of pressure there but bucks are an elite offense which hides the bad defense when a team like the pacers can keep up with that keep up then that'll be an issue in the playoffs too so i i think that like you need a good defense but i think the days of needing an, an elite top tier defense to win the finals i think that those days might be passing us by as the years go by and the offenses just get so good that uh you might be able to just win with an absolute elite offense. But the problem is that the Bucks defense is really bad. I don't know. I, I guess that they could turn it on. They can, they can reach a gear. They do have, like, Giannis back there. They got Brooke back there who can block shots. But I mean, what's their game plan when Brooke's done? Because how old is Brooke? Brooke's 35. What happens if he gets hurt? Then what? Because you're. It feels like your entire defense currently is. All right, Damian Lillard, please God, just fucking stay in front of your guy just long enough so that Brooke can come over and help block the shot. Like just stay in front of him long enough. And Dame's like, eh, I don't know. Eh, we'll see. Is Andre Jackson the third best defender? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, and another part of this game that I'm just now realizing. Chris Middleton plays 15 minutes. Uh, doesn't play in the second half. Was on a minute restriction. Giannis, in his post-game presser after the game, said, we knew that Chris Middleton was only going to play a half of basketball. That should be a punishable offense. That should be a punishable offense. And here's why. Here's why. If you're going to let sports betting infiltrate every single aspect of your game, which I, I very much disagree with, but you've done it. You've done it. Every, every other second of your fucking broadcast. Every other second of your broadcast has something to do with gambling in some way shape or form you you can't have you know there's player props oh is chris middleton gonna is chris middleton gonna make three threes tonight is chris middleton gonna score 14 points whatever the fuck it is I'm not connecting the dots on how minute restrictions are related to betting, though. Because people bet on player props, is what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know what Chris Middleton's would have been. But people bet on before games started. No, I did not have... I, no, I, I don't bet. I'm telling you guys, I don't bet. I might hear there, like, maybe once a week or something. Maybe. I, I pretty much never, ever bet. But, you know, Chris, I don't know what Chris Middleton's player prop would have been. But if it was like 14 points, you feel fucking sick. That should be punishable. Like, that, those are the things. Those are the downsides of letting sports, one of the many downsides of letting sports gambling infiltrate your sports. Wow, Tim Hardaway Jr. is, like, speaking of sports gambling, Tim Hardaway Jr. is a uh, comfortable favorite right now for six man of the year. Comfortable. I'm not going to lie, I fucking hate sports betting and people who do it. I don't hate people who sports bet. I mean, it's, it's understandable. It is fun.
Nas Reed's going to get it. He's not even on here. Nas Reed has worse odds than Benedict Matherin. I'm a full on hater when it comes to betting. I, I think I, I, I've said it a million times. I think sports gambling should be like cigarettes. It's legal, but it's kind of taboo and you don't really talk about it. So anyways, this was a great game. Uh, a lot of fun. As I'm saying that ESPN bet. You know, before too long, you're, you're, you're going to have a little guy like pop up on the screen right here. Did you bet on this game? Well, why don't you bet on tonight's slate of games? I'm going to have to click off of them. Hey, don't click away. You could get the fucking Mavericks. Uh, we're boosting this odds. The Mavericks are now minus 16 only for the next 30 minutes. Slightly have the 6, 17 leg parlay. Are you trying to get in? I'm actually ashamed to admit something. I'm actually ashamed to admit something. I had a friend who was in Vegas over this past weekend, and he uh, put me and another friend of mine who, you know, watch a good amount of sports into a group text. He's like, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm in Vegas. Help me with this NFL parlay. And uh, I was like, hey, I'm, at, I'm the wrong guy. I don't fucking watch the NFL, really. So my other friend sent him this eight-leg parlay, and it was something insane, like $20 to win 6000 and my dumb ass goes, you know what? Put a 20 on that for me. Just because you, you see the number you can win. And you're just like, damn. All right, just, put, just throw a 20 on it for me. And it was chalked immediately. It, it was chalked 10 minutes into, into uh, the NFL games on Sunday. And I've just looked at myself in the mirror and said, you're a dumb ass. I, I always make fun of people. I always make fun of people for betting eight fucking leg parlays. $20 is fine. It's just a fun thing. No, the reason why I was mad at myself for that, I, I'm cool with losing $20 on a bet in the NBA because uh, I watch the NBA. So I can't be mad. I can't like really be mad at myself for losing because it's like, oh, well, you know, I thought, I thought it was pretty good. The NFL, it's like I, I was betting on teams. There's teams that probably I haven't, I haven't watched a single second of. Like, I couldn't even tell you who the fucking quarterback of the team was. That's when it gets real sickening. So anyways, great game here. Um, I, I just, again, I, I don't, the Bucks are 25 and 10. <laughs> they're 25 and 10. I mean, the record show, shows that they're an elite team. They have a top three player in the world on their roster. Then like a top 20 player in the world as well. Top 30 player in the world, maybe. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Has Dame's been a top 20 player in the world this season? Of course, right? Bottom two defensively. But man, I just, it's such a struggle for them sometimes that I don't know. This game right here, holy fuck. Wow. Jokic is a wild boy, man. A wild, wild boy. Okay, so he went 13 of 16 last night, 34 points, including just, uh, I mean, an insane buzzer beater. <laughs> just an absolutely insane buzzer beater. I need to look at this. They mentioned this in the broadcast. Okay. Over his last four games, Nikola Jokic is shooting 88% from the field. In his last four games, Nikola Jokic has missed five shots. Five shots in the last four in the last four games. 11 of, of 11 from the field against the Grizzlies, 9 of 10 against the Thunder, 6 of 7 against the Hornets, 13 of 16 against the Warriors last night. Jesus. Ugh. I mean, that is just... That is just a crazy shot, man. This is what I'm saying. This, is, this might be the only unicorn in the league currently, besides Wemby. Wemby's a unicorn for a bunch of different reasons. 
Uh, Jokic to me is the only unicorn. I hate how often that term gets tossed around. Jokic is the only guy in the league. I feel very comfortable saying we will never see another one of and then Wimby, of course, just because he's such a fucking freak athletically. And KD. No, I think over time you'll start to see some more fluid seven footers. But KD made that possible. I, I don't like I don't think you'll see another Jokic. Just the blend, the size, the obscene touch and, and the playmaking, I don't think you'll ever see. I don't think you'll ever see a, a player that does the things Jokic does ever again. In a sport, I think you can play basketball for the next thousand years. And I don't know if a guy like Jokic will ever come across again. Thirty-four for Jokic, thirty for Aaron Gordon, who was just incredible in the fourth quarter of this game. Peyton Watson closed this game. He had nineteen. He was really good. Aaron Gordon is is Aaron Gordon is good. He is so good. Watson is a dog. I love Peyton Watson. I absolutely love Peyton Watson's game. He could be their MPJ replacement. I don't think he th he's not going to get up the shots that MPJ does, I don't think. But defensively, he's a problem. Was this his first game since the dog incident? No, he played on a... He played on New Year's Day. Yeah, he had that dog in him. The dog got transferred to him on the bite. These are the games right here where you just watch and it's like, oh yeah, that's right. The Nuggets are the Nuggets are probably the best team in the West. Oh yeah, that's right. They're the Denver Nuggets. Like they could they could look like shit the entire game. Be down 18 points with six minutes and 30 seconds left. 18 points. 16 minutes and 30 seconds left. And just pull out the defense has looked utter trash all night. The, the Warriors are just picking you apart bit by bit. And then the Nuggets just go, oh, okay, hold on a second. We actually want to win this game. Like, all right, all right, let's turn it on. They go, yeah, they went small, a little small ball, uh, Aaron Gordon at the five kind of sparked the kind of sparked the uh, comeback. I looked it up. Aaron Gordon at the five this season. The Nuggets defense only 97 points allowed per 100 possessions. Pretty elite. Just keep in mind, obviously, Aaron Gordon's at the five. It means Jokic isn't on the floor. And they've had they've really struggled with that. The reason why Jokic's odd and off numbers are obscene is one, they dominate the minutes he's on the court. But also when he comes off the floor, it's a travesty. And they, they love running like four or five man bench units. They love it. But Aaron Gordon at the five, I think, is is an interesting thing for them. Like just just pull the fucking plug on the Zeke Naji thing. He sucks. Pull the plug. Let's just let's just go small. Aaron Gordon's really good. Very trendy right now to put your starting four as your backup five. Well, I think teams are starting to realize. Wait, like, why do we have to sit there and struggle mightily through like dog shit backup center minutes when I can just put a forward there and we can just, you know, just have a better group on the floor than having some dog shit backup center run around. Warriors are in a weird spot because they have these old guys and then these promising young guys they should develop. 
Zeke Naji is no BS the worst statistical player, both offensively and defensively. Oh, no, he's not good. <laughs> like, he's not a very good player. I know this is very in-the-moment thinking, but it's hard not to feel like Luka is never going to get the MVP. If, if Luka just continues this, this trajectory statistics-wise, he's going to win it at some point. There's going to be a year where it's kind of a down year from other guys or whatever the case may be, and it's like, all right, Luka needs his MVP. Like, it has to be now. Um, and he's only 24 years old. Like, he's not even 25 yet. So it is very in-the-moment thinking, but it, it might be a Kobe Bryant-type deal where he you look at his like most people would say Kobe Bryant's what a top seven player top 10 at the absolute worst player in the history of the sport he has one MVP he won the MVP once you know he won the MVP once and it was his age 29 season so I definitely think, and you know, I, I want to say it's not impossible that Luca wins the MVP this year, right? It's not. It's not. That is not. That is not out of the realm of possibility. The ship has not sailed on that. He's fourth in, in odds right now. He is behind Shea. I just I don't agree with that. You guys know I love Shea to death, but I can't get behind that personally. Um, Embiid one, Jokic two. I can't get behind the Embiid thing again. I'm sorry. I know he's having an absurd season, but like this is such a narrative-driven award. I thought I thought everyone kind of agreed. I thought everyone kind of looked at each other and said, "All right." After again, Joel Embiid diarrhea shit hit it all over himself in the playoffs again. That we were like, "All right, listen, we we can't give him back-to-back -back MVPs. We gave him the MVP last year. Let's move on. Like do something in the playoffs first, please." Like, so what? You're going to put Embiid in rarefied air, back-to-back -back MVPs, to even two MVPs, period, is, is a rare thing. You're going to put Embiid in those conversations, and this, this guy has not made it past the second round ever? Like, come on. This is a narrative-driven award, through and through. It is. It sucks. It shouldn't be. You could say, well, it's a regular season award. Cool. It's never been looked at that way. Okay? Sorry. You're, you're crazy if you think that it really is just a regular season award and nothing else matters. That's, that's false. It's not how it's been. Before Giannis, Giannis hasn't won an MVP since he won the, in the finals. Why? Because they all, everyone kind of agreed that, hey, he's got to win. Like, he's got to win. We can't, we can't give him three MVPs without winning. And then he won, but, like, everyone had already moved on. Right, and Jokic, and people are like, well, you can't give Jokic three in a row. He's, he hasn't won. Like, only, only a very few handful of players have done that. Who was it? Larry Bird and Bill Russell? Was that who it was? The only two guys who have won three straight MVPs? So, yeah, we don't want to put him in there. He hasn't won and all of this. But then Embiid is just like, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Well, how, much, how much did he have? 55 against the Pistons? He's the MVP. Well, wait, I thought we all agreed that... It, can he, can he not poop himself in the playoffs first? Like, before we really put him in these rarefied talks. Like, can we not put him in those? Can he just, like, not poopy in his pants? In the playoffs? And then, and then, you know what? If he has a great postseason run, great. Next year, he's back in it. Like, what happens if we give Embiid the MVP again and his, his point per game total in the playoffs drops again by 10 points? His efficiency tanks, and they're out again in the second round. Then what? What well, argument is made that Luca missed the playoffs entirely? How does he get it? Because even though even though Luca missed the playoffs entirely last year, and even though Luca's twenty four years old and has only been in the league six years, uh, keep in mind Embiid's Embiid's turning thirty years old. Embiid will be thirty years old uh, before the playoffs start again. Uh, and again, so the six-year age difference that's there, uh, five years, I guess. Uh, Luka's been to the Western Conference Finals. Luka's second all-time in playoffs points per game. Um, Luka's an absolute dog in the playoffs. Everyone knows this.
I'm sorry. I don't even know how we... I genuinely have no clue how we got here. I'm trying to rack my brain. I have no idea how we even got to this. Uh, <laughs> no idea whatsoever. I feel bad too, because Embiid, Embiid's so good. But I'm sorry. I thought, I thought we... I just... It doesn't feel fair, but I'm sorry. This is how it's always been. Can Josh Green be KCP for the Mavericks? KCP can do a lot of things off the dribble. That shocks people. All right, so the Nuggets, incredible win. Jokic, incredible shot. Aaron Gordon, an absolute dog in the fourth quarter. So good. So good. Hold on, I saw a quote that I wanted to talk about. Uh, about the Warriors, here we go. Peyton Watson closing out this game. Down 16 with 18, 18 points with six minutes and 30 seconds left. Unreal. Unreal. All right. Warriors. <sighs> wow. I mean, what a fucking disaster, huh? What a disaster. Steph, 30 points. 23 shots, 5 of 12 from 3. I don't give a shit. Steph was a disaster. A disaster. In the fourth quarter of this game. An absolute disaster. I need to, like, what, what, what were his fourth quarter stats? I need to see. Clay's a free agent at the end of the season. How do you lose this one? I mean, genuinely. How are you not up, si up, up, up 18 with six minutes and 30 seconds left? How do you get outscored by 21 points the rest of the way? How do you get outscored by 21 points the rest of the fucking game? How does that, how is that even possible? Yeah, they literally stopped scoring. Steph in the fourth quarter, minus 14. In eight minutes and 35 seconds, one turnover, one assist, seven points, two of seven, 104 from three. A, a disaster in every sense of the word. And it's, it is crazy how the Warriors were just scoring at will. And then the Nuggets were just like, all right, let's turn it on. We're going to have Peyton. We're going to keep Peyton Watson out here, who's an absolute menace defensively. We have Aaron Gordon, who's like a legit, who should be like a guy who, not, not like a defensive player of the year, like he's not going to win it, but should be a guy where anytime the defensive player of the year conversations come up, people instinctively say, well, hey, Aaron Gordon, he's not even on the odds list. I mean, like, again, he won't win it. I was like, hey, I want to give a shout out real quick to Aaron Gordon. Eighteen point, eighteen point game with six thirty left. What a fuck up! Two games under five hundred now for the Warriors. Um, backbreaking. I mean, back, a backbreaking loss because you lose at home to the to the Mavericks, and this felt like a shit type of moment then you, you get a pretty a nice a nice win against the, the magic like you do you get a pretty impressive win against the magic at home 
The Magic are a good team. Not a great team or anything, but a good team. That's a nice win for you. You know, you feel a little bit better about yourself after a game like that. Okay, can we, can we turn this thing around? Can we, can we right the ship? Let's go, let's go on a little run. You're up 18 in the fourth quarter on the Nuggets. Okay, we, we figured it out. We have figured something out. All right, let's get this ball rolling. You shit your pants, and now all of a sudden, you've lost four of your last five games. I don't know, man. What do we make of this team? Uh, I think they just are who they are. Like, I, think, I think they're a close to 500 team who has like, um, one of the greatest players in the history of the sport, so they'll have some games where they, where they, went, they beat a team they're probably not supposed to beat. But that's, that's just kind of who they are. Oh, oh, boys. We are in for it. The post-game thread of this game the post-game thread for this game on the Warriors subreddit has 1.2 thousand comments. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's all about. Jokic has only missed four shots in four games. Yeah, we were talking about that. Five shots, I think is what it was. Still, insane. Five shots in four games. Jeez. Blowing an 18-point lead at home and losing to a Jokic half-court buzzer beat is very on-brand for us this season. Unbelievable. Yeah, Looney's been so bad. Looney's been so bad. I mean, he had two uh, loose ball fouls on rebounds down the stretch of this game. Couldn't grab a rebound down the stretch of this game. Uh, how many offensive rebounds in the fourth for the Nuggets? Four? Because like all four of those came during this run. Aaron Gordon had three. Looney's been a travesty. It's kind of sad to watch. Looney was a minus 12 in four minutes in the fourth quarter. Yep, and Steph had, I mean, to put the Nuggets in a position to win, Steph had a terrible turnover. He does have these horrible, horrible turnovers late in games. Where the, like, you just watch and you're like, what are, what are you thinking? Like, why are you trying that one-handed live dribble skip pass right there? And Jamal Murray baited it. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful play by Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray's basically guarding two guys on the weak side of the floor. Kind of like steps towards the guy on the wing. Steph sees that and loads up to throw a pass to the corner, and, and Jamal Murray jumps at him. It was a really nice play. A horrible pass by Steph. I mean, that was just an insane shot. Yeah, Kaminga played uh, zero minutes in the fourth. What? What, were, what, could, what could Kerr have possibly seen? The Kaminga stuff, I mean, Kaminga's been really solid this year. He's popped quite a bit when you watch him. He's popped. He does things you're like, okay, here we go. I see it. I see the Kaminga stuff now. End of game situations is why you choose a bigger player over a guard to start a team with. Yeah. Man, if, if I'm a team, I'm called about Kaminga. I mean, what, what are you going to get told? No, we really value him. No, you fucking don't. He just played zero minutes in the fourth quarter. No, you don't. Can we save him? He said they went up 18 with Wiggins on the floor, and by the time it was late, Kaminga was cold. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Worst loss of the decade. Most pathetic loss ever since I started watching a decade ago. Man, that's crazy. 
bandwagon bandwagon Warriors fans who started watching basketball when they started getting good, which was a decade ago, ten years ago. Like those are those are like legit NBA fans now. Like I think I think watching ten years of basketball, like ten years of the NBA, is like. That that's like uh you're you're like a legit NBA fan now. You've watched enough where you could like What do you guys think about that? Whenever you start getting into a sport, how long do you have to watch before you're like, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan? And I know my stuff. Like how long do you think? Of course you'll you'll never know enough about a sport unless you played it at a decently high level. Um I did not play basketball at a decently high level. I played baseball at a decently high level. And I, I barely watch any baseball at all. So funny how that works. If every game three years. I mean, if you really sit down and you really watch for a year, I think you could be. I, I think you can have a decent idea of what's going on. But it, it will take, I would say, four to five years of, like, decently watching to be, like, really. Doesn't matter the time. Yeah, if you watch it all, you're a fan. I'm not, I'm not saying, like, to be considered a fan. I'm saying, like, to really know and understand the shit that's going on. I know some guys have played at a high level and they're idiots. Yeah, that is true too. Cause I, I know I know some baseball guys who like played in college who like just don't know anything about baseball really. But they'll just say they'll say things and you're just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Some guys are just good at sports. Gilbert Arenas, that's true. That's true. Kenyon Martin. Four points in the last seven minutes. Unbelievable. All right, what's this quote? It's tricky. Since I've been here, we don't have five guys that we know that they're supposed to be on the floor whenever it's closing time, Kaminga said. It's a little, I don't know how to say it. It's a little weird. I've been here for three years now. I'm used to it. I'm never surprised when I see a lineup change at the end of the game or even in the game. It's a culture thing. So, okay, I was thinking about this yesterday because I, I saw people talking about Moses Moody, who's been a complete and total DNP, um, who, who I don't think should be a DNP. Like, it, it's, I don't think Moses Moody's, like, going to set the world on fire, but he, he could definitely be a contributor somewhere. Um, do, it is a player empowerment era. Do these young guys have any, any power whatsoever? Because if I'm, if I'm Moses Moody, like, how, what is he? Is this year three in the league? He's about to have to get paid. If I'm Moses Moody's agent, I'm like, hey, get me the fuck out of here. Get my client the fuck out of here. Like, we're trying to get, we're trying to get a second contract. We're talking about Moses Moody, man. Yeah, but Mo Moses Moody's like, I, I think could be a fine rotation player. And he literally doesn't play. He, like, Kuminga should not be getting this little minute. Because if I'm a young guy, I'm looking at the Warriors. They're two games under 500. These, these old fucking geezers are running up and down the floor. Can barely get up and down the floor. They're absolutely horrible. And I'm just like, what am I doing here? I, I have to watch Wiggins go and clank another three. I have to watch Wiggins shoot 33% from the field tonight again. I got to watch Clay miss everything on a contested three with four hands in his face. Like, what am I doing here? Kerr plays Trace Jackson Davis and Pods to his credit, no, though. No. Yeah, he does play those guys. But what, what, is, the, what is the excuse for Kaminga not playing? Mo, M Moses Moody? Okay. Hey, Podzemski came in and he's been a dog. Kaminga? Subbed out with seven minutes left in the third quarter and doesn't check back in? 
the whole game. Wiggins is a guy they need to be good, and he gets the Kaminga minutes. Yeah, well, Wiggins hasn't been good for a while. Can't wait for the Celtics to send a garbage trade package for Kaminga. <laughs> uh, we needed another guard, so we, we went and got Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard. And they need size. Who's that, uh, who's that center that the Celtics have? What up, Sally? I'm about to hit the gym in, the, in an hour. Yeah, I think I'm going to hit the gym, too. I, I don't think I'm going to have time to do a video today, which sucks, because I was going to try to play the algorithm game and get in on the Wimby stuff. But, um, you know, it's, it's a delicate balance, because you want to get in on the algorithm game on YouTube, but you don't want to get in too hard. Because everyone, everyone and their fucking mother is going to make a video about the Giannis and Wimby game. Yeah, we need we need a little bit more shooting. So we went and got Sam Hauser. We need a little bit more size. So we got a uh, uh, Namisa Kita, Namisa Kita for Kaminga. We like it. We like the trade for us a lot. Need that clickbait title with your face saying Wimby is underrated. I've been experimenting with thumbnails and I've learned including your face is I think people do it because it has worked in the past. I, I think it's a bad thumbnail thing. I, it's just me personally. I actually avoid videos like that. If somebody has their face plastered on the fucking thumbnail, I'm avoiding that video. I don't want to watch it. I guess it depends on the type of content you make for an NBA related video. If your face is all over it, I don't want to see. I don't want to watch the video. I can already tell I'm not going to like it at all. All right. Uh, so anyways, the, the Warriors are a travesty. The Nuggets can just turn it on whenever the fuck they want. And uh, Victor Wiminyama is going to be really good. All right. What, what's the slate of games tonight? Should be a, a busy slate. Holy, holy shit. Does every team in the league play tonight? How many games is this? Uh, what do we got? What are like the national televised games? We have the Knicks and the Sixers. That's pretty fun. On ESPN. And then what's the late game? Grizzlies, Lakers. Okay. Okay. That's not terrible. Mavericks play the Blazers tonight. I mean, would be absolutely shocked if. Uh, if Derek Lively plays in this game, would be shocked, even though he is only questionable. He is only questionable. What else do we have tonight? Uh, Jazz Celtics. That could be a sneaky fun one. That, that could be a game where it's like, what the hell? The Jazz were within five with three minutes left. That could be a fun one, I think. Who's getting hurt tonight? Don't say it. Hey, sorry, his thoughts on the OMAC situation? Does great versus Houston and only gets dropped in garbage minutes and we need rebounds and defensive size? He's not ready for the NBA currently. I don't think. He's close, though. I, I like him playing in the G League. I like OMAX going down to the G League. I think, I think that's a smart move. Hawks and Pacers. Was the last time these two teams played? Have they played since that insane game? No, okay. Yeah. Last time these two teams played was a 157-152 game. Thunder and Nets. Wizards and Cavs. Hornets and Bulls. Oh. Timberwolves Rockets. That could be interesting. If the Timberwolves lose tonight, I, I I'm I'm right I'm jotting some notes down. That's just what I'm gonna say. Just gonna jot some notes down. Clippers and Pelicans is a fucking banger. Oh, my God. They should flex this game on ESPN. They should flex this game on ESPN immediately. 
Magic Nuggets is pretty fun. Denver on the second night of a back to back though. And then in the Magic have been I wouldn't say Nuggets scheduled loss. The Magic have been really injured lately. Heat Suns is pretty fun too. Okay, there's there's actually a decent amount of fun games. Pistons Warriors, can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine? Yes, uh, this is a, this is actually a fun one. The Grizzlies and Lakers, because both teams absolutely have to win. The Grizzlies got pretty much got to win. Uh, I, it's crazy to say almost went out, but they got to play it like damn near a sixty win pace from here on out to e maybe even sniff a playing spot. And Raptors and Kings. That's actually a fun one too. The way the Raptors have been playing lately since the trade. So a few pretty good games tonight. All right, and we'll. As we will do every single uh, episode between now and the trade deadline, we'll close it out with a few fan spot trades. A few, a few fan spot trades. Wait, that's not what I wanted. I'm just sort, sort, uh, sorting by new. Sorting by new. This already feels like a fucking mistake. This already feels like a mistake. The, the second trade I see is Steph Curry to the Magic. Uh, all right. The Knicks get Zach Levine. Why? Why? Evan Fournier, Mitchell Robinson, Quentin Grimes in a first. I don't think they would trade Mitchell Robinson. It's crazy. That sounds actually. Oh, is this yours, Cray? Mavs get Wiggins, Wendell Carter, and Trumo KK. Tim in a first to the Magic. Rashawn, Maxi, Hardy in two seconds. I don't think the Warriors do this. I don't think the Magic do it either. It's not, it's not a terrible trade. But um, I don't think the Warriors would do this. Yeah, Mitch is out for the season. I mean, I definitely don't think the Warriors would do this. I don't think the Magic would do it either. But it's not terrible. I mean, it's great for the Mavs. I just don't, I don't think you give up on Wendell Carter Jr. like this. This is one of those, like, why, why, why sell low on Wendell Carter Jr. at this point? You're selling at the absolute lowest. Riskiest trade. <laughs> Magic go all in for Steph Curry. Jonathan Isaac, Markel Fultz, Mo Wagner, Anthony Black. You need, a, you need like, Franz would have to be in this, I, I'd have to imagine. Yeah, it, it, Franz would have to be in this trade. And, and this is assuming, like, Steph Curry demands the trade. I don't even think the Magic, why, why would you do that if you're the Magic? Like you're bringing in a 35 year old point guard. We're going all in for what? Bulls get Tobias Harris, Paul Reed, Moses Moody, two firsts. The Warriors get Zach Levine, Javon Carter, who's been so bad, and Andre Drummond. Sixers get Clay Thompson and Kevon Looney. Why do the Sixers do this? Yeah, a first for Clay and Looney. And they're getting rid of Tobias Harris. I, I, I would rather have Tobias Harris than Clay Thompson. So I, I think immediately they say no. The Warriors and, and, and Bulls is a little interesting. I guess I haven't really thought of Zach Levine on the Warriors. I don't think he would fit into what they try to do at all. But that's kind of intriguing. Clay for Levine straight up. The Bulls just get cap relief. Lakers land Hawks Bogdan Bogdanovich. For Rui and Jackson Hayes. I, I just, I love when people do the write-ups. I love the write-ups. 
kind of interesting. Um, the Hawks get like a legit wing. Maybe that, that means that they could trade Sadiq Bay or just let him walk if they don't want to pay him and restrict the free agency. Kind of interesting. I don't know if the, would the Lakers do that. Four way makes Knicks contenders. Okay, I can already tell you this trade's not going to, it would never happen in a trillion years. The Knicks get DeMontis, Sabonis, and Wiggins. This is one of the worst trades you'll ever see, folks. The, Ma the, the Kings are trading DeMontis, Sabonis for Julius Randle. Um, Jeremy Grant goes to the Warriors. The Warriors are trading. Is that Guy Santos? Okay. Guy Santos and Andrew Wiggins and getting Jeremy Grant return. Um, yeah, I'm sure they would love to do that. The Blazers are trading away Jeremy Grant and only getting a one first in Mitchell Robinson. So now they have Aiton, Mitchell Robinson, and Robert Williams on their roster. Yeah. The Montes a bonus. The Montes a bonus anchoring your defense. You call yourself a defender, uh, a contender. <laughs> Holy shit. The way the Knicks could still grab D Mitch. So I actually just saw a thing about Donovan Mitchell and that, that he like people really actually think that he doesn't want to leave, which is interesting. That'd be cool. That'd be cool for the Cavs. Four firsts. Fournier, DiVincenzo, and Quentin Grimes for Donovan Mitchell. That would be that would actually be kind of tough to turn down if I'm the Cavs, and I and I really don't think Donovan Mitchell is staying. Siakam to the Pacers. I feel like I've seen that a trillion times. Oh, here we go. A fun little five teamer. Let's see how let's see how this one works. Okay, the Hawks are getting Siakam. The Lakers are getting Zach Levine. The Magic are getting D'Angelo Russell. The Raptors for Pascal are getting one first. I already think this isn't going to happen. Jalen hood Shafino, DeAndre Hunter, Gary Harris. That is nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough. The Bulls are getting DeJounte Murray. Rui Hachimura in a fur. How do the Bulls get a better return for Zach Levine than the Raptors do for Siakam would be my question. How do you feel about the Knicks-Wolves swapping Cat for Randall? There's no way that would happen. At least not in the middle of the season. All right, let's sort by, let's sort by team. Let's look at some Dallas Mavericks one, then we'll get the hell out of here. I've already been on this too long. Uh, Raptors get a solid package for Siakam. Mavs get Siakam, Otto Porter Jr., and Garrett Temple. Two first-round picks, Jane Hardy, Rashawn Holmes, Grant Williams, Tim Hardaway Jr. It's a steep price. That's what, that's what the uh, – can't trade 25? Oh, yeah, they can't. They can't. They can't. I was about to say, you can get the Knicks to remove the protections, but even if you do that, you still can't trade 25. Well, they, they, Mavericks do have two firsts to play around with, I think, so. That's the, the Raptors do get two rotation players and Tim and Grant Williams, a young guy in Hardy who probably plugs into their rotation. That's a steep price. That's a steep price. I, I'm not. That's a steep price, man. Sorry to say it. If you knew Siakam was staying, I still think that's a, that's a steep price. I got to be honest. Siakam's 30. Yeah, the, the Sixers thing looming is, is scary, trading for any potential free agent. Because the Sixers can have a max... Uh, they got max money to offer somebody in the office. Okay, here we go. Jamie Grant? Oh, here. Oh, Cray, this is you. Oh, yeah, we just looked at this, didn't we? Don't 
Dodo back in Dallas. Let's see. Dodo, Matisse, Thibel. That can't happen. This can't happen. This trade can't happen. Matisse, Thibel cannot be traded to the Mavericks this season. I believe, right? That's what I remember people saying. Since he signed an offer sheet with the Mavericks, he can't sign. He can't be traded to the Mavericks this year. Let's just see. Yeah, not until July 2024. All right, well, let's just see what this looks like anyway. Ryan Repair. Is he, is he playing in the G League or something? Dorian, Thibel, Repair. The Mavericks are giving up Hardy and Josh Green and Kleba? Fuck yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. I don't think anyone else would. All right, how about this? Mavericks are getting Dodo. Oh, Dodo for... Uh, don't think the Nets are going to do this. Dodo for... Tim Hardaway, essentially. Lots of Siakam trades. Luka to the Jazz. <sighs> Free Kyrie. Is this a fucking Lakers fan? Mavericks are getting Zach Levine, Gabe Vincent, Torian Prince, and a first. For Zach Levine. Oh, and we're trading a first. That's horrible. Remember when we want to do pick 10 and Tim Hardaway Jr. for Dorian Finney-Smith and picks 21-22? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I do remember that. Okay, here's an interesting one. This, this was one we tapped into quite a bit. Hawks are getting Tim Hardaway Jr., Sean Holmes, Josh Green. Mavs are getting Clint Capella, DeAndre Hunter. And there's a, there's a pick swap in 2028. The Mavericks are getting the worst of the pick swap. If I'm the Mavericks, I, I, I do not want the worst of this pick swap. Why, why am I getting the worst of this pick swap? Would be my question. It's it's not it's it's yeah it's it's an interesting trade I think. Nick thinks no on Capella because he doesn't think he'd play a backup role well mentally. That is that is part of the hard. Okay, here we go. Market into the Mavs. Oh, market in Andor, and I can already tell you right now that whatever the Mavericks are giving up is nowhere near enough. Oh, and we're pick swapping. Two firsts and a pick swap. It's nowhere near enough to get marketing. But, I mean, that would be pretty fucking incredible. I mean, I would do this without even thinking twice about it. I want to see a little bit more creative ones. Like, who are some players that we don't talk about going to the Mavericks on the Mavericks? Like, Siakam, we could see a million Siakam. Vucevic and Caruso. Kleba, Markeef, Hardy, and a first for Vooch and Caruso. Eh. All Siakam. All Siakam, all the time. I want to see a player. Okay, here we go. Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris, KJ Martin for Tim Hardaway Jr., Grant Williams, and Markeith. Yeah, I don't think the Mavericks. What is this one? Oh, my God. Lots of moving pieces. Lots of moving pieces. Jeremy Grant, Drummond, and a second. And we're extending AJ Lawson. Okay. 
What are we giving up is the question. I already see one first. The Bulls get a second for Drummond. Whenever I was making that video yesterday, I, I really don't think, I don't, I don't know how Drummond gets traded. I don't, I don't know how it makes any sense at all. Because if it's for a second round pick, why, like what's the point of doing it if you're the Bulls? Like realistically speaking, that second round pick is probably going to be nothing. What's the point? We need somebody to play center for us. Fail to start off makes it so much better. Well, sometimes the failed is because like guys can't technically get traded until like the 15th. So like, yeah, that, that the only reason this failed is because Jeremy Grant cannot be traded until the 15th. So what if the Bulls move Levine and others, including Drummond? Yeah, Drummond would be like included in a trade and then maybe the, the, you could like get in on it as a third team or something like that. Oh, whoa, hold on. This is uh, a lot's happening here. Josh Giddy's going to the Jazz, and oh, is Marketing going to the Thunder? Marketing and Kelly O for Bertans, one, two, three, four picks in Giddy and Poku. The Jazz are getting Hardy in this too. So the Blazers are trading Jeremy Grant. Hmm, two seconds or two firsts for Jeremy Grant. But also, but also, two firsts for Jeremy Grant and you're taking two like not great contracts. Why is OKC helping us? Because I guess in this trade they're getting marketing. So this, this is actually, this is actually a pretty well-made trade. I, I have to say. I have to say, this is a pretty well-made trade, assuming, I don't think it would happen. I don't think the Jazz would do it, just because I don't think the Jazz are trading marketing. But if they were to, this is an interesting trade. Whoever made this did a good job, I think. I, I don't get why the Bulls get involved. Because I, I think the Mavericks would do this. You give up a future first, but you're getting off the Kleba contract. You're getting off the Holmes contract. You are losing Hardy, but what, what's, you know, what is, what's his future on the team? And you're giving up a future first. You're filling your backup big position. You're getting his future second. And you're getting Jeremy Grant to plug into your four moving forward. The Jazz are getting rid of marketing, but they're getting three firsts. Maybe the Jazz want one more first, but you're also getting Josh Giddy. Maybe you ask for another first. I think they probably would. The Thunder are getting marketing and Kelly O. It's a pretty well made trade, honestly. I, I got to give props to whoever made that. Jordan Clarkson. There's a name I have never considered. Oh, my God. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. John Collins, Dodo. I, I respect the, the Jordan Clarks one because I've never even seen that or thought of it. Is there any other players who are like, whoa, I never thought about that guy. I'm not even like entertaining the AD or marketing ones. Whoa, basketball. Boyan, Isaiah Stewart, Isaiah Livers. <sighs> oh my God. The, the Pistons are trading every player on their fucking team. <laughs> Oh, oh, Jaden Ivey's getting traded in this. Okay. What, what is this? Even? What is this? Okay, what am I looking at here? There will never be a trade in history where a team is getting eight players. The Pistons are trading their entire roster for Ben Simmons, Keldon Johnson, Grant Williams, Maxi Kleba, Dwight Powell, Lonnie Walker, Mamu, and Hardy. Why on earth are the Pistons doing this?
Like the Pistons are just doing this because for shits and giggles. Give me a player I haven't thought about someone. Those are the fun ones where it's like, oh shit. Now that I think about it, okay. Okay, what the fuck is this trade? This is the type of shit I'm talking about. Gallinari and Mike Muscala for Sean Holmes, Markeith Morris, and a second. You do get off the Holmes money. Okay. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, sure. I guess I would do this. Sure. Was is is this like in a in a string of moves? Oh, it is in a string of moves. Okay, this guy's got a road to the title series with a bunch of different Mavs trades. All right, let's look at him. Joe Harris and Mike Muscala. What's the deal with this? What's this guy's deal with Mike Muscala? Pistons get Kyle Kuzma, Rashawn Holmes, Maxi Kleba. All right, so this guy's just saying, hey, take our fucking shit contract. Get off Rashawn Holmes and Maxi and get Joe Harris. Yeah, I mean, the Mavericks, yes. E easily, yes. Easily, yes. <sighs> Marvin Bagley and Kelly Olenek. Okay, I'm listening. I'm percolating. We give up a first. But you get off the maxi money. No way. No way I can give up a first for that. There's no way. Absolutely none. Mavericks get Dodo, Cody Martin, Nick Richards. I'm interested. Hornets get Rashawn Holmes, Jane Hardy in a second. Nets get Maxi, Josh Green in a first. That's pretty interesting. I, I got to be honest. That's, that's pretty interesting. Caleb Martin's been like hurt and stuff. I think, I think I would pretty easily do this if I'm the Mavs. I don't think the Nets would do this. Unless the Nets like really like Josh Green or something. Pretty interesting. All right, we got to get out of here. I, I always get on Fanspo for way too long, and I don't think it's great viewing uh, content. So anyways, if you watch this on YouTube, you can check these out on playback.tv slash You can check out the VODs of these on YouTube, the Slightly Biased Clips channel.